Now, if there's one of you out there, and I know you are, raise your hand, who doesn't know our history, raise your hand. Okay, there you go, there's one. As long as there's one, I always tell this story. In April of 1982, the United States Border Patrol shut down the Florida Keys, establishing a new border, right where Cartown Road and US-1 come together. They claim to be searching for illegal aliens, but residents and visitors wondered what aliens could be hiding in glove boxes, <laughs> under their front seats and in pockets. The result was an 18-mile traffic jam, a lot of drugs got thrown out on the side of the highway. <laughs> Word went out around the world you could get, well, it was great if you were walking the highway. Yeah, right? Word went out around the world you could get into the Florida Keys, but you could not get back out. That was bad enough, costing our your fledgling tourism industry millions of dollars a day. But when the beer companies threatened to stop sending the beer trucks down here, things really reached crisis proportion. <laughs> So the city fathers got together, filed an injunction in federal court in Miami to get the U.S. government enjoined from treating us like a foreign country. The judge refused to do that, letting the government keep a border they were talking about making permanent. So when the mayor and his cohorts walked out of the federal courthouse in Miami, a forest of microphones in the world press said, Mr. Mayor, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? He said, I'm going to go home and secede from the union. <laughs> well, naturally, with a statement like that, the press followed him back down to Key West, where the next day our mayor and soon-to-be Prime Minister Dennis Wardlow seceded Key West from the United States of America. He then proclaimed to the Cock Republic, our flag went up a bare flagpole. We have never taken down their flag to put up ours. That would be very disrespectful, and we leave disrespect to them. <laughs> he then declared war on the United States. Our first minister of defense went out and beat a real United States admiral in full dress uniform who had volunteered to receive our declaration of war on behalf of the United States. About the head and shoulders with stale Cuban bread. <laughs> stale bread remains our weapon of choice for dealing with Federalist or other oppressive forces. In fact, we realized over more than one cocktail right here at the Scooter Wharf Bar a few years ago, we are the best armed country in the world. Really, if you think about it, everywhere bread is baked, we have a weapons factory. Anyway, our new Prime Minister surrendered immediately demanding a billion dollars in foreign aid. Today, almost 32 years later, we're still waiting for the foreign aid. We figure with simple interest alone, it's an astronomical amount of money, but we're not holding our breath. But today we stand proudly as the world's first fifth world nation, a sovereign state of mind that seeks only to bring more humor, simple human warmth, and respect the world we frankly find in sore need of all three, especially lately. We have a stated foreign policy, which is the mitigation of world tension through the exercise of humor, and we stand proudly as the people who seceded where others failed. <laughs> Welcome to the Cod Republic. Now before I swear you guys in, I gotta bring a very special person up here